So the comments sections of YouTube and forums and sometimes even rideshare Facebook groups can be a little bit negative. And I think that if you only spend time in there, you might have a little bit of a warped view of perception on what it's like to be a rideshare driver. There are a lot of people that aren't frankly aren't super happy when it comes to driving. And my recent annual survey of over 1,100 drivers actually found that Uber drivers are more satisfied in 2018 than they were in 2017. And a majority of drivers were also pretty satisfied with Uber's 180 days of change campaign. So what's going on? Is my audience just overly positive? Or do you think that there's something else going on? Now, Today, I want to talk about the results of the annual survey that I do and release every single year. Full results available on the rideshareguy.com. We're going to go over it today. Uh, we've got a blog post up on the Rideshare Guy that I'll link to in the show notes, and you can actually check out the full PDF report and take a take a little bit if you want more in depth look at the methodology and things like that. But you know, you may have also seen that this our survey results have actually been in the news a lot because of this whole MIT and Uber fiasco about what drivers are actually earnings. And I won't get too much into that today because I've got another video on the channel that I'll also link to in the show notes. But if you want to learn more about that, you can go check that out there. So, you know, just a little bit of background, you know, at the end of, at the beginning of every year, I actually send out a detailed survey to everybody on my email list. And this year in 2018, we have about 52,000 drivers from all over the country, you know, pretty, you know, I wouldn't say evenly distributed, but pretty well distributed, you know, a lot of drivers from LA and San Francisco, because that's where there are a lot of drivers, Chicago, a lot of the big cities, but it lines up well, you know, population wise. And we got about 1,200 responses. Now, you know, Uber had, you know, just talking about some of the sort of high level findings, you know, Uber had a pretty terrible PR year in 2017. Yet, you know, they sort of ended up, if you look at the numbers they released, doing more rides. And, you know, like I said, drivers were actually more satisfied at the end of 2017 compared to the prior year. Now, Lyft, drivers that said that they indicated uh, they primarily drive for Lyft were actually way more satisfied than Uber drivers, but the gap is definitely narrowing. And, you know, like I said, with that 180 days of change campaign, even though they didn't increase the rates. I think the tipping option and the 24-7 support line definitely, you know, uh, made a lot of drivers happy. And I think that shows in the results. So let's go ahead and dive in. You know, like I said, we've got a full uh, PDF report of the data that you can actually uh, click on and go learn a little bit about if you want to see further. Otherwise, um, we'll just go over this blog post right now. Now, the first thing is, you know, how did Uber's terrible year of PR affect drivers? Like I said, so at the beginning of 2017, 49.4 percent of drivers reported that they were satisfied with their Uber driving experience. So not quite a majority, but almost. Now in 2018, that number went up by 9% and 58.2% of drivers reported that they were satisfied with their experience. So this graph sort of just compares the two. And You know, I think that it's easy, you know, like I said, right, if you only are reading comment sections or if you're only on, you know, maybe like an Uber people type forum, you might think that everybody hates driving. But I think a majority of drivers out there, you know, and I think one of the nice things about my email list, since there are 50,000 people on that email list, you have a lot of the casual drivers, people who are interested in the industry, but maybe aren't invested enough to always be commenting, you know, sort of always be in, you know, Facebook groups or whatever it might be. They're just sort of casual observers. And I think that, you know, a majority of drivers, they may not even know that these rideshare Facebook groups or blogs or YouTube channels exist. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. And, you know, one of the reasons why I think there's that increased satisfaction for Uber drivers is that 2017, if you remember, it was actually the first year in a while that Uber did not lower rates in 2014, 15, and 16 in January is sort of becoming this annual kind of, you know, S-storm where (laughs) drivers would get really scared and upset. And then it really sucked when Uber would lower rates because everyone was making a lot uh, less money. Now, that was one thing they didn't do in 2017 and haven't done so far in 2018. So that's been nice. Uh, and I think that could potentially be a reason. And then another thing is, of course, the 180 days of change. You know, I think that, of course, there's, you know, it's really just a start for Uber and they need to do a lot more to improve the driver experience. But at the same time, you know, it clearly shows that, hey, Uber at least is recognizing that there's some problems and they need to fix it. And, you know, their solutions may not be 100% agreeable with you or I, right? For example, I think they still have a ways to go with Uber pool and ratings and increasing the rates and things like that. But at the same time, you know, a lot of these things that Uber is fixing, like even, you know, something as simple as, you know, a $15 return fee to a passenger. Now, that may not quite be a 
enough in every situation, but it's at least a start because in the past you had to handle all that on your own. And this has been a problem for like five years, right? It's not exactly, you know, like passengers just started losing their phones yesterday, right? This has been going on for four or five years, these types of problems. And so now, you know, I think it is a positive that Uber is at least starting to re- not only recognize these problems, but starting to try to at least build their product in a way that, you know, now rewards drivers and maybe they'll tweak it in the future. So, you know, like I said, 57% of drivers actually indicated that they were satisfied with Uber's 180 days of change campaign with 48% and saying that they somewhat agree and then 9% saying that they strongly agree. So definitely a majority. And, you know, talking about earnings, we also asked drivers how much they uh, earn before expenses. And so that's obviously a key point. But Uber drivers said that they earn $16.90 per hour, which is actually a dollar more per hour than they reported last year. And I think a big reason for that is the tipping option. You know, Uber added this tipping option in 2017, and it hasn't been, you know, a total slam dunk and drivers are now earning double or triple or anything. But obviously, as you can imagine, I think most of us are getting more tips. And while, you know, there still is this culture of Uber passengers who aren't tipping a ton, um, you know, I think some tips is definitely better than no tips. Now, you know, one of the interesting things things that we found is that there was a big positive correlation between experience, so the number of trips you've given and an increase in reported earnings. So new drivers, so basically if you've done zero to 500 trips, reported earning just under $15 per hour, whereas experienced or veteran drivers with 10,000 trips or more actually reported earning $20 per hour before expenses. So that's over $5 per hour difference. Now, why the difference? Now, I think that it should be obvious to any of you guys watching my channel. I mean, my whole business is kind of predicated and built on the fact that more experienced, more savvy drivers will make more money. That's why we have a video training course. That's why I have my book coming out right up here that you probably saw. I'll show you guys real quick. Um, The Rideshare Guide, right? That's why we have this book coming out. And I think that you know, experienced drivers, they start to realize that, hey, maybe there's times or situations where it makes sense to cancel on that passenger, right? You become a little bit more cutthroat. Of course, you're going to learn the best times, the best places to drive, not to chase the surge, um, you know, to find those times where surge is predictable. But at the same time, I think you become a little bit more cutthroat. You sort of understand, hey, this passenger is not where they say they are. They sound pretty drunk. I'm probably should just cancel this ride and move on to the next one because this is probably going to turn out badly. I'm going to wait 10 minutes for them or they're going to want to go through a drive through through. Uh, maybe you start realizing that, hey, I can filter out passengers based on their rating or use an app like Maestro to drive for both Uber and Lyft and maximize my earnings you know, in my downtime. So I think that's pretty clear that, and this graph actually shows that nice correlation. So that's definitely a cool thing. Um, you know, And of course, when you talk about like what other services out there, now obviously most of us are primarily driving for Uber. 58.7% of you guys indicated that you're primarily driving for Uber. 20% said Uber and Lyft equally and just 16.8% said Lyft. And, you know, I think that makes sense. You know, that's sort of Uber is typically the dominant, you know, if you're only going to go with one, you probably want to go with Uber. But definitely anecdotally over not just last year, but over the past few years, I feel like we've heard from more and more drivers who are switching to Lyft or only driving for Lyft so they can get that power up driver bonus every week. Or they just feel that Lyft promotes a more driver centric, um, you know, kind of community and culture. And so I think that that's definitely something we've seen, but it's still not like, you know, Uber and Lyft are completely even yet. Now, Obviously, this graph just shows how many dri- how many services drivers are signed up for, and you can see that you know overwhelming majority, almost eighty percent of drivers are doing at least two or more services, and in often case three or more. And you know, just to give another quick shout out to Maestro, I'm really liking this app. They recently added Postmates, so now, for example, if you want to do Uber, Lyft, and Postmates all at the same time, especially during those slow times, you can really increase your chances of getting a request. Now, this is an interesting graph right here because basically what it says is that this is the market share of driver service. So this is saying that close to 90% of drivers have signed up with Uber. 75% of drivers have signed up with Lyft. So Lyft has really signed up a lot of drivers, yet you see that most of them are primarily making their money or getting their trips from Uber. And then you also see Uber Eats, which I think makes a lot of sense because it's so easy, you know, if you're an Uber driver to also just go and opt in to Uber Eats in the cities where that is active. So that's a pretty big number compared to, you know, companies like Postmates, DoorDash that specialize in food delivery. And one that I want to highlight, Amazon 
Amazon Flex, it jumped up from less than 1% amongst uh, market share for drivers all the way to 7% in one year. And I think that's in big part to the fact that Amazon Flex is really expanding all over the country. They pay a fixed hourly rate that I know a lot of drivers like. And you know, honestly, the feedback we've heard from drivers is that just aren't enough uh, shifts available. Um, so that's definitely uh, something to keep your eye on if it's not in your city already. It also, you know, I want to say that Lyft's market share actually grew from 62.5 to 75.1 percent. So seems like Lyft is gaining. And, you know, I think a big reason for that is that drivers, you know, often end up preferring Lyft over Uber. I mean, Lyft's uh, president, John Zimmer, he's out there driving every New Year's, right? Lyft was the first company to have tips in the app. They had the power driver bonus. Now, of course, in 2018 and going forward, these apps are becoming more and more similar. But I think that it really goes to show that that initial company culture has come a long way. And there's just this sort of perception that Lyft, um, you know, is the more driver friendly culture. And I think that clearly shows with the satisfaction numbers where, you know, basically um, we have right here, 48% of drivers somewhat agree that they're satisfied with their driving experience with Lyft. 27% strongly agree. That's 76% of drivers compared to just 58% with Uber, which I think is pretty shocking when you think about the fact that Uber's busier, you tend to make more money with Uber, right? These Lyft drivers that are able to figure out are definitely uh, happier. So this chart right here kind of compares uh, Uber and Lyft drivers. So there's not a ton that stands out. One other question that I did ask was pretty interesting this year. We asked drivers how much they, um, you know, sort of uh, basically what's the most important thing to you as a driver, pay and flexibility were obviously up there, everybody wants to get paid. But then we also asked how much drivers think they should be earning. Now, overall, between Uber and Lyft, we that drivers reported that they earn $16.93 per hour before expenses. But they also indicated that they think they should be earning $26 per hour or just under $26 per hour, which is basically a difference of 31%, which I think is pretty great. And I think that also reflects the fact that, hey, you know, drivers feel like, um, you know, really care about pay. They feel like they're underpaid. And they'll also, a lot of drivers quit because they're not making enough or their expenses start to pile up. So I think this is definitely something that Uber and Lyft are, you know, whatever way they manage to do it, they're going to have to look at increasing rates eventually or figuring out a way to pay drivers more if they ever want to improve, you know, the retention of drivers and they don't want, you know, a bunch of drivers to quit at the end of every year. So of course, you know, every year I like to ask this question about Uberpool and I sort of already know the answer, but um, most drivers do not like Uberpool. I think a majority, 65% of drivers in Uberpool markets actually indicated that they were dissatisfied with their Uberpool experience. And this, you know, is pretty for pretty obvious reasons. It's sort of, you know, you actually on Uber, you actually make less um, per mile and per minute doing Uberpool than you do for UberX. And so that's, you know, you're sort of doing more work for actually less money. So that kind of sucks. And then, you know, one interesting thing that we also asked drivers about their lift line experience and a majority of drivers actually, well, 31% said that they actually, um, you know, were satisfied. So 40, 45.5% total were satisfied with their lift line experience. So not quite a majority, but, you know, 45.5% of lift drivers compared to 22% with Uber that are satisfied with Uber pool. You can sort of see that, you know, that's a little bit of interesting there. And I, I think even though Uber is now adding an extra dollar around a dollar per pickup for the second passenger it's not a ton and they still pay lower rates whereas you know a lot of drivers have noticed that Lyft actually now pays uh, Lyft rates whether you're on Lyft line or Lyft so they pay more for Lyft line per mile and per minute and not a ton more but they do pay a little bit more um, than Uberpool does and we also have just a couple quick interesting questions about uh, vehicle choices Toyota was number one 22%. The average age of vehicles was 2012. Ford was also up there with 10.5%. I recently tried out the Ford Fusion Hybrid and really enjoyed that car, so that makes sense to me. A lot of drivers do not, still do not have rideshare insurance, which is always surprising to me. We have a rideshare insurance marketplace on our site that I'll leave a link to in the show notes where you can go and actually get a quote from an agent. A lot of times it might only be 10 or 12 bucks more a month or even sometimes the same cost or less because drivers haven't shopped around for insurance for so long, and so that's definitely a way Way, um, that you can make sure you have adequate coverage. And then when it comes to sort of some of these uh, driver employment and misclassification issues, 76% of drivers say that they want to be independent contractors. Um, so I think that is pretty big numbers. But it also makes sense since most drivers are doing it part time, they're not putting a ton of hours in. And then we also ask drivers, um, you know, what type of background checks they would uh, like to see. And 63% said fingerprint based background checks, 37% said online 
online or name based. So, you know, just want to uh, share all these results with you guys. Definitely a lot there to unpack, but I think it's pretty interesting. And if you guys haven't participated in this survey before, we send it out every single January. So make sure that you're on our email list. We give away some cool prizes. This year we gave away a couple grand prizes, first prizes, some memberships to our video training course. Uh, second prize was some Amazon gift cards. And then we also gave away a bunch of rideshare guy trucker hats. So some cool prizes for participating. And if you actually want, if you're one of these names down here, we will be notifying you over email. So you can go ahead and claim your prize. But for the most part, you know, lots of comments and definitely some interesting findings. So I encourage you guys to uh, go ahead and check these out on the website and feel free. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to leave them below. We release new videos every single Tuesday and Thursday and uh, look forward to hearing from you guys. All right, take care. Bye-bye.